Thank you everyone for joining us here again for the for another AIM Sports Learn Fast webinar. This is our, uh, our 156th webinar since we started these when the pandemic started and uh, this is the, the second one of our uh, fourth season. So uh, uh, been doing these for quite a while and they've just been great fun, great uh, information for our users. Uh, and, and as always, whenever you uh, Whenever you're trying to present information, it's always great information that that uh, for me and uh, and the fellas that uh, that have been helping us put these together. So uh, we learn a ton as we do these as well. So we appreciate that. Um, today we're going to talk about analysis inside of Ray Studio Three. We've done a lot of webinars over the course uh, of the last year or so since Ray Studio Three was made uh, it was released in a, as a production version of software. And, uh, and, and those function things were very important to us, but the, uh, we really wanted to do a couple, maybe two or three series of videos that were nothing but data analysis using the tools. And this is the second one of those. If you missed the first one, we'll last uh, go back in our YouTube uh, library and you can get the, uh, the corner entry from, uh, from Ray Phillips that we did last month. This one here is corner analysis by the numbers, as I mentioned, and our co-hosts are, are Tice Vinstra, from the Netherlands and, and Matt Romanowski from trailbreak.com. We're gonna talk about uh, maybe so, a new and novel way of, of breaking down the corners and understanding and, and just using the, the functionality of Ray Studio 3 and maybe some different ways than what you've looked at it before, setting up the screen and then uh, and then looking at different different corners and, and breaking them down and seeing some interesting numbers and some and, and trends and, and some other things that we like to do in analysis. So uh, just a, by way of a quick introduction, the Tice is a uh, is kind of a success story here for for us. It certainly is for me. I I've been very very happy that we uh, we started these webinars and and Tice was one of the very first um, uh, folks that started to watch them very early on from the from the Netherlands and he um, he was active in the chat and uh, we did not know Tice before we did any of these. We met on during these webinars. And uh, I, I think it's been a joy to get to know him a little bit more and then have him start to come here and, uh, and work with us and, uh, and co-host with us uh, occasionally. I think this is his third time of co-hosting with us. He's uh, um, uh, been around motorsports for quite some time. You know, uh, we can chat about that in a minute when we bring him on. But um, what I really enjoy about him is he's, he's uh, self-taught on Race Studio starting in the early 2000s with some sample data back in Race Studio 2. And, uh, now he's been doing a ton with iRacing. Maybe, uh, maybe uh, some point in the future we'll have him back on. We'll talk a little bit more about the sim racing side, and he can show us some more pictures of his updated uh, sim rig with, at that point. So that'll be kind of fun. Uh, joining Tice is Matt Romanowski. He's been on here uh, many times. Um, Matt's going to join Tice and just kind of help him. Um, you know, Tice will do some talking, Matt will do some talking and, and work our way through this, but we're using some of Matt's data. Uh, so it'll be, uh, it'll be a good time to, to, to chat about and look at the, uh, the 914 Porsche data that, uh, that we've all had a chance to look at in the past. This data, just like all the rest of it, um, for those of you watching on YouTube later, down in the description box below, you're going to have links to the presentation materials, the data, the user profiles, the uh, the track map segment file, and uh, and the math channel file. It's all down there, so you can recreate what we're seeing here if you want to uh, to play with this, or of course use your own data. So take a look down there if you're looking at this later, and uh, and get up to speed. Okay. Okay, we're going to bring in we're going to bring in Tice first. The um, we're going to talk a little bit about just kind of set things up. Don't uh, don't worry about if this is basic or not. But we're going to use a lot of terms later on, and uh, and we just kind of want to break this down the, the the corner structure and what what we're talking about when we're looking at certain things. And and Tice is just going to uh, give us an idea of how he kind of breaks a corner down, and then we'll move on to the data analysis step. So with that, let's bring Tice. Tice, Tice's microphone up, and Tice, welcome. Thank you again for coming and doing this. Thanks for for um, um, uh, forming this idea and this 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 way of looking at uh, data analysis that we're going to use today. I've uh, I, it's going to be a good time. So, Tice, kind of talk us through the corner phases of what uh, what you've what you've created here. Yeah, thank you for uh, thank you uh, thank you for uh, for uh, having me uh, again, Roger. Um, First of all, the idea 
uh, about this uh, kind of profile is to take a deep dive into multiple laps of one split. So you have a test session of 10 laps and you want to do a deep dive into one corner to see what's the best way to take the corner. So uh, just, go, uh, just to go a little bit back to basics, uh, what is a corner? Okay, uh, yeah, that's straight. Can we go to the next slide, please, uh, Roger? Let me see if I can do that. Oops, wrong way. There we go. So you uh, you have your entry on the corner. You start braking. That's your first phase. So you have a, a braking phase. You have a corner entry phase. That's the transition between braking and turning in. You have your mid corner phase. What's the it's more or less the rotation of the car with your apex. And then after the apex, you have your exit with your transition from turning to acceleration out of the corner. Really simple, but I guess it's uh, important to highlight it uh, again because we're going to use that in the profile one more. Mm -hmm. So when you go to the next slide, Roger, we have some key point uh, indicators. You have your break point. That's a key point indicator for your corner performance. You have your break release point. Uh, the difference between those two is your break distance. That's another key point indicator. You have your turning in point mm -hmm. and you'll have your apex. And of course you can make this as complex as you like, <laughs> but with these uh, key point indicators, you can get a really good idea of your corner performance and where you can gain or lose time in the corner. Perfect. Um, the uh, uh, it, it, Tice has broke this down. There are there are some people that will maybe even break it down in a few more pieces. But but as uh, Tice mentions, it, we're going to uh, jump in and we're going to study a corner and break it down in the data, and we're going to use some of these same terms and. Uh, we're gonna, and we're going to talk about how to set up Race Studio 3 to do this. And keep in mind, those of you that are here live, as you're, uh, we, the, we are interactive here. So uh, you, you, a lot of folks are chatting in the, uh, in, in the chat box. I love that. That's, uh, everybody gets to know each other. Uh, uh, that's a very good thing. But as you, if you have a question about once we get into the meat of the, uh, the presentation here and doing the data analysis, if you have a question, make sure you open your question and answer box. That's the one that I'm following along. Put uh, your question in there, and we'll uh, we'll we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll take a few questions when we get towards uh, the second half of this uh, this webinar. So keep that in mind, if you would appreciate that. Okay, Tice, anything else to add about the corner breakdown as we uh, as we're kind of moving forward? No, uh, just one thing. Uh, everybody can use this because we're not going to use uh, uh, additional sensors. We can all do this with uh, GPS data. And of course, you can add your own sensors like steering wheel angle and brake pressures. But all we're going to do today is with GPS data and just one additional mesh channel. So, great point. Great point. Uh, we we did um, make sure we did this as as a basic level. So even if somebody has a solo or not any additional sensors, but always keep your mind fertile and open and thinking because. Uh, maybe there's some sensors that you have, maybe you have brake pressure, maybe you have, you know, steering and, and, and you can do some things and just plug them into the same um, basic idea of the, uh, the layout that we've set up and it will work for you just, just fine. So thanks Tice for mentioning that. Okay. The, um, the, the, the next thing we want to talk about, and maybe we can bring Matt in just a little bit here for this, this piece, the, um, What's going to be interesting, and I, I mentioned it briefly, is is this is kind of the layout we're going to end up with. And um, the but what we really kind of want to show is is we all think of Race Studio three analysis as you you click a button, a tab opens, and 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 Emiliano and the software team have developed a, a look, uh, what they you know kind of a default layout. And uh, but boy, keep in mind that you could you can adjust these, and I know a lot of people do a little bit of this, but keep in mind that you can adjust this in many different ways, and uh, and that's what we're going to show here today, including some um, 
some changes that have happened in the last couple versions of Ray Studio 3 that you may not have noticed. Then we're going to talk about those. Matt will kind of cover a couple of those. So if, uh, if you see some things here we're going to talk about and you haven't updated your Ray Studio 3 analysis in a while, you, uh, you may see a couple of things that Matt does here that uh, may not work on yours. So make sure you update Ray Studio 3 to the latest version. Matt, talk a little bit about this layout and kind of what it, uh, what it feels like and where we're going to head with it. Yeah, this one, I have to give full credit to Tice and Emiliano because Tice had the original idea and kind of we were emailing back and forth and he bounced some off of me and um, I was just sort of the protagonist in it. Like I, I just kind of egged him on in some of the situations of what if we added a video? What if we did this? Um, but it was really his work that got us here. And, and what's so neat about this is it's applicable to anyone with a name device and it uses a lot of the um, the panels, the ideas that we can display information in different ways that um, Emiliano and the software team have put in. And it really revolves around the idea of a channel report. Um, and that's what we see there in the middle. And what's neat about the channel report is it works sort of like a spreadsheet. It gives us a numerical value, a solid number that um, we can get it from any of the measures that we have. And in the channel report, we get this great ability built in Race Studio 3 that we can display the minimum, the maximum, and average, a distance of that minimum, a distance of the maximum, and all those sorts of values. It, it's a very, very powerful tool. And with the dynamic linking, we can then pull up points in the um, synced video. And we have the movies tab on the right. And then because everything's linked really well, we can have a track map and a segment map with it. Um, and something that's unique to Race Studio 3 is the ability to have this split details graph in the channel report, which on the surface, sometimes you look at it and you go, wow, that's not a huge thing. But once you use them, you realize how much more power is in there is to be able to take the couple values and the numbers that we see in the channels report and to be able to plot them out in a graph. And I think as you start to use it, every time I use it, I, I play with what I'm doing a little bit. And I realize there's a new way to get more power. Um, and one of the ones I'm sure we're gonna do live while we're looking at this is the ability to turn laps on and off in that split times report to make those graphs kind of self zoom and get us into the information that we really want. So it's, it's incredibly powerful. And when Ty sent this to me, I kind of said, you know, this is amazing. It works for every device from a plain solo to the most advanced setup. Um, and when you want to dig into your data, this gives you all the tools to really get it to go as deep as you want or really as surface as you want. Um, and we're going to jump into all that today. Absolutely. So we're going to, we're going to build, we're going to start maybe part way, you know, built with this, but we're going to, we're going to do this live. Uh, we're going to jump out of, of, uh, of the presentation materials here in just a second, jump over to Matt's computer and we're going to start, uh, Tice is going to, Tice and Matt are going to talk their way through the, the creation of the panels and show you just basically how to like kind of load them up and, and configure them and get them working. Um, and and uh, Matt, I'm going to stop my share, and you can start yours, and then I'll and I'll uh, talk about. Um, yeah. I'm going to talk about that. That Tice is not only um, another interesting thing is he developed all this from his sim racing data. So uh, those of you that are you know we have a lot of race racers here that are doing data work, and we have other folks that are watching that do uh, do sim only, and some that do both. And you can grab that data from the sim racing, and that's where that's where Tice developed uh, this this concept or this idea that he's that he's sharing with us today so I appreciate that okay Matt I'm going to turn it over to you and uh, explain a little bit about where you are how you're set up so far and then and then we can kind of go from there yeah so I thought we'd kind of start with just a plain um, screen that you would see if you open your data up and you're looking at uh, data movies we just have a speed trace in the movie so this kind of assumes you've imported your data you've um, grabbed your video and you have it all ready to go. Um, and from here, I was gonna let Tice walk me through the process where we build um, out the whole profile and we get everything in here and then um, we'll jump into the analysis. Okay, Tice. 
So the first step you need is a really good track map. Uh, Matt loaded it already. It's a track map where you have good segments. Uh, we had webinars about this before. So you need a split way before the breaking points starting and ending really after the corner, after the full throttle phase and the car has to be straight. That's, an, um, that's a really important thing for this, uh, for this type of uh, deep dive. So that said, uh, that's loaded. So can you please uh, add a custom layout, Matt? And we're gonna come in. And so to add the custom layout here is we have the, the box with the plus sign on it. And with that, um, we can click on it, add a custom layout, and we're gonna call it um, corner by numbers webinar and I'm going to put a little two here because I already have one of these and now we have it here yes okay um we don't need the channel bar so when you hit space bar it will hide I guess yep just makes it uh, some room and you can you change this uh, time distance plot into the split report Please. Yep. And for anyone kind of building these at home is the way you start to change all these and you do it is you can right click and it gives us the chance to choose our panel. And for this one, the key is the channels report. So we are going to pick the channels report right at the top. A lot of people I'm think you, you need to... I'm sorry, a lot of people think you have report. to uh, uh, split report is uh, is what he's saying, but I, I don't oh. think you need to. I think you, I think it's channel report, but uh, yeah. a lot of people think they have to delete a panel before they can add one. But that 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 choose panel thing is actually a pretty uh, uh, a pretty good idea. So this is our split report in um, Tice, what we wanted to hear yeah. was our channels report so we yeah, can build sorry. in. Sorry. All those mins sorry. and maxes. Yeah, sorry, you're correct. When it, when uh, when Tice first put this uh, concept together, we did have to use to use the split mm -hmm. report. But uh, we'll and Matt will talk about that how it's uh, Emiliano has made a couple of changes to make this work for us. So um, we uh, we have both uh, wrong. Sorry, you, you need to use the channel reports for selected split. That's the correct one to do. I'm sorry. Right. That's okay. And then the next. Yes one is um we need to add the panels and build this whole screen out like tice had it so tice which one did you want to the right uh when we add to the right video so we have a nice overview of uh yeah and so um sorry to interrupt you tice is this is one of the ones where when we build these out they take a little bit of planning and uh i just realized if we add it to the right we're going to have difficulty Kind of splitting our screen in the top and the bottom yeah, so you can better split it first uh yeah below. yeah build the ones across the bottom first and the, the far right. the far left was your split split details so i like to add a track map down on the lower left but you can do your split details first yep and then your channels report graph uh, to the right right choose channels report graph we had our video up here. And this is kind of what's neat about the power of Reef Studio 3 as we build these out is we don't have to do it in any specific order. And um, the other neat thing in this that Tice did that it used it in a way I had never thought of is we have these vertical and horizontal bars in between all our um, panels and we can resize everything how we want. And we're gonna see that that becomes more and more important as we work through. Um, so Tice, which did you want to the right of our channels? I used, the, I used the split map on the right. Split map, all right. Tra track track map for selected split. Split, right. yeah, that's so correct. Yep. Right. So all right. So, so now we've built out the general panel and the, the general profile of what we had. Um, and one of the ones that James Colbert had mentioned in one of the previous webinars was the idea is we get these things in and we want to make sure we save these 
profiles so that if we get to a point we don't like what we have, we always have that way to revert back to something. So I'm just going to go up here and quickly save my profile so we don't have a problem later. Can you please do a right click in the channel report, Matt, and say uh, choose panel? In the channels report. In yes. here. Yeah, and do a choose panel, please. Because we're going to need the third one from the top channel report for selected split. That's the one we have to do. Because now we can choose the split we want to see. Right. And That's this is an important do. thing that if you haven't updated your Race Studio 3 recently, you're not going to have this option. Um, and it's something that the software team and Emiliano built really in response to all the work that Tice did in these profiles. And it, and it adds so much power here um, that we're going to show you here in, in just a minute. Jeff Wasilko asked a question in the question and answer box that uh, that I had mentioned some recent changes in race 33. Could we please call them out when, when these changes are appropriate? And this is the, the biggest one, Jeff, and everybody else that's watching. Uh, and there probably will be a couple more as we go, but uh, great job of catching that, Tice. Yep. Thank you. So um, with the channels reports for split updates, we have a new button uh, on top. That's a little track map. And with this button, you can select the split you want to see in your channel report. So when we go to turn one, for example, that's a nice corner to use. Uh, we don't see that much information right now besides uh, split time and the total distance of the split. Uh, on the right in the split map, you can see the driven line. Mm -hmm. And, and here's where Tice did something that I thought about, and um, he did it in a way that was much easier than what I had thought about doing before. So I'd, I'd come up with different ways to do a lot of math to come up with the minimum speed, the maximum speed, and all those things. And what was pretty neat was Tice went and used the power of these channel reports. So Tice, what was the first item you wanted to add here? Well, the first uh, key point indicator we discussed uh, was uh, entry speed. So that's the maximum uh, speed. So when you select the GPS uh, speed, and we take the maximum, we can see our entry speed into the split just before the braking zone, our VMAX. Um, and one thing that it's funny as Roger and I have talked about how we use Race Studio 3 and the different things. And I don't know if this happened to you, Tice, is um, sometimes it catches me off guard that I look and I think, hey, there's a problem. This panel's not filling. And one of the keys to how this report works is you have to click a value. You have to select something because as we build this report out, it changes this panel automatically to the area that we've clicked. And you'll see those that data change as we move through. So Tice, let's add a couple more items in here. Um, yep. And then what we'll do is we'll jump to that finished profile that we're sharing with everyone and they can see. So what was the second one that you'd want? The second one is our minimum speed. So our apex speed. So we go back to GPS speed again and select minimum. Should. I have grown to really love the ability to use these search boxes everywhere. It saves me so much time. And uh, we can, uh, we have to switch on in math channels, all the GPS uh, math channels. So can you check if that's uh, pre-selected? This is a pre-selected, of this is a set of math channels that everybody has in the in Ray Studio. Yep. And one of the keys for everybody is you're doing this at home when you're working through it is make sure that you go to this gear and you enable all these channels for your device in your session. So you can do it all sessions. You can do it for one device. You kind of have to pick how you want to use these math channels so you can make sure they get applied right. And you can see here through the symbols that I've done that for this data set. Um, and these math channels get built in and they get shared. So it's all based on 
the GPS information. And once we've added those math channels to everything, um, we can build this set out. And what I'll do kind of in the interest of time is I'm gonna jump in here and load this profile that Tice has made for us. And we've shared. So we can see that he's added GPS speed, that math channel with the distance of the GPS break on, the GPS break lap distance, the longitudinal acceleration, the GPS speed. And as we scroll over, we have the absolute GPS corner radius. And we'll see how Tice likes to use that um, along with the distance of it and the distance of the minimum speed. So Tice, I think this is kind of how you had built everything out. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you can uh, shift the, the columns if you like, because the minimum speeds, it's better to have it a little bit to the left just after the braking. Yeah, so we can move our yeah. speed up. And then yeah, that's fine. Things. Yeah. All right. And if people didn't kind of catch that at home, they built this pretty handy kind of drag and drop interface through this sort items. And it's the arrow with kind of the sunburst. And once we go in there, we get to drag and drop these items wherever we want. And it's very quick and easy to move them around. Okay. All right, so Tice, I'm ready to hear how yeah. you would go through this and let's really critique and see what happened and dig deep on my turn one data here. Yeah, okay. So uh, first of all, when you look at all the uh, times for the nine laps, you see that lap two is a really outlier with 70 seconds compared to 11, 12 seconds. So um, that's the outlap. So we can deselect that one. So we have a neat uh, data set. And um, well, first things first, uh, lap three was our quickest split because it's uh, it's colored, uh, what is it, blue? That's the mm -hmm. uh, fastest, uh, fastest split. Uh, and you can see uh, the lap distance is also, of the split distance is also one of the shortest, just, uh, just a little bit longer than the shortest split. Um, when you look at your entry speed, it's also quite high. That's the next column. Uh, well, that's that really speaks for itself. Uh, the next column needs a little bit of explanation. That's the we use a, a channel uh, what gives a digital uh, number for break on or off. We had a webinar about it, I think, almost two years ago for the for the coast and the, and the lift. And what it's doing is, is when you hit the, there's a math channel for break on or break off. And what Tice that has built that math channel that the math channels that weren't the aim based ones that, but the ones that we have made available to you to download, he has created a way that it's calculating when, how many feet into the segment that that, uh, that that the brakes were applied, you know, looking at the longitudinal G's and uh, and then that, so that number smaller is farther back towards the beginning of the segment. Uh, the bigger that yeah. number, the deeper into the corner that you apply yeah. the brakes. That's even not a mass channel. That's that's just a function of the channel report. You can say uh, maximum of distance of the maximum value of the channel because it's zero or one. At the moment, it becomes one, you get this value. So this is the earliest point in the split when the channel becomes one. So that's the breaking point. So you can yeah. see in, you can well, see uh, that Matt uh, breaks uh, after 30 meters into the split. And when you double click this Matt, that's value, the 30. You see that the video syncs as well. This is the breaking point. This is the point on track, Matt's breaks. Uh, uh, where you still, 
Je just uh, let me break in for a quick second. Jeff asks a couple of times to, that we talk about where there are differences with the new version. That double clicking in a channel report by double clicking on those numbers and it changes what the, where the video it takes whatever value you've double clicked on, and it puts the data at that point. So his video is jumping to that exact point. That's another thing that's in the in the channel reports, uh, whether they're based on segments like this one or the channel report overall. You double click on it, your data will jump to that specific spot. Yep. And so that will help. Sorry, Matt. Yeah, and what's really neat with that is when the video jumps is um, sometimes when things are very consistent, it's difficult to see. So um, if you're playing with this data on your own later, and hopefully you can kind of see it in the screen now, if I am on the first one that has the breaking distance at 30, you can see the board for um, the 300. And when we go to the latest breaking, we can tell we're past that. We actually have the 200 board down here. So you can see that difference in the, in the video screen really quick. Um, and as we planned for this webinar, one of the things that I realized they've added that um, has been there for a little bit, um, but it's been updated for the power of the Smarty Cam 3, is we can clip a segment of the video out by just clicking this button. We can also get it with a screenshot. And the real power of that is if you're one of the people that likes to build your notebook out and um, have your break markers and have all those things written down and be able to study it later, this is a great way because you can take this screenshot out and then um, print it out, put it in your book, and really build a visual track walk of the track the whole time. Um, and it, that's a really powerful tool as you go to a new track or as you're really trying to hone in your skill set at, at a particular track. Yeah. Uh, the next one is the lap distance in the splits when the break. Uh, when the break channel uh, is high. So this is our uh, break distance, our complete break distance for the split. And you can see it's quite interesting that in lap three, the, the quickest uh, split, the break distance was quite long compared to, for example, lap five. That's almost uh, 20 meters longer, but the split was quicker. So that's a really quick way to see uh, the difference between the laps, between especially a lot of uh, a lot of laps. When you compare it in time distance, you most of the time take two or three laps. But when you have a big data set like this or even bigger, you can do a quick scan of multiple laps, what was quicker or not. Ian, and when you click, oh, I was going to say to expand on what. Ty said there is we can we can see these values in the numbers, but what's really really neat here is with the split report graph and in the channel report graph here is as we hover over these numbers, we're going to see it highlights that point. So when we're on the 141, we can see the GPS speed through and how that GPS trace went. We can see what that segment time was and see that it was actually the fastest segment time. We can see that it was the second lowest distance that I covered, um, but we can see when we look at the um, the channels report graph in the bottom middle that the value actually was not the latest that I ever hit the brakes. It was one of the earliest that I hit the brakes. Um, so being able to look at that graphical way to display it is really neat. And we can actually go the other way too is that as we hover over these, we can quickly pull up, you know, which segment it was lap five, and it'll highlight that in the channels report for us as well. So that linking of the data and all the different points is pretty neat. And when we are able to click on the um, the value in the channels report to then have the video go to that point, and we can really see what Tice was pointing out that this is one of the earlier we can see how far I am from the apex at this point to if we take, um, or one of the later, I'm sorry, versus if we take one of the earlier, we can see how many car lengths difference that is right in the video. 
So whether you're a numbers person, you're a graph person, or you're a video person, this profile really hits all those points. So uh, that was the breaking phase more or less. So we're transferring to corner entry and we're getting minimum corner speed. So that's the next uh, column. That's the thing that gets talked about a lot, I guess, uh, in the community. Minimum corner speed is a thing I heard between the between uh, drivers uh, a lot. So you can easily see, uh, especially with the uh, with the synced video, where in the corner you get your minimum speed. Met is selecting a, of or is clicking multiple laps, so you so you could see kind of interesting um, there just from a data analysis standpoint you see that matt's best lap is lap six that's the best overall when it says best over there in that left column that's the best overall lap and uh but the best segment is actually you know uh, oh, lap seven right yeah maybe maybe three early on but uh yeah. it's kind of interesting to see that that minimum speed uh your best minimum speed was your best lap but the best segment you know actually had a a lower minimum speed so you were able to get off the brakes probably or, or you hustled it through somewhere else we'd want to dig in a little bit deeper and figure out uh, exactly what happened there it's kind of interesting way of quickly throwing things out to you to uh, to, uh, to to showing that out yeah uh, tim mentioned slow slow in fast out wins again kind of thing because you are yeah. about to go down a, a long uphill s's a, a long acceleration zone um and this is a perfect chance to hit. Scott asked a really great question, and he said, could we put a dot on a track map? Yeah. And we can. We can add another panel, and I'm going to add it down here on the bottom on the left. And if we choose the track map, we're going to get that dot so we can then pull it up and we can see right where that distance was. This is something and, and that I've been wanting to chat with uh, Emiliano about. We don't get, we get the segments on the track map with segments. We get the, all the lines, but we don't get a positional dot exactly where we were. So I tend to like to add that map on the left. So you get to exactly when you double click on it, it puts the dot exactly where that happens. So if Matt hits that deeper breaking one, it not only moves the video, but it also moves the dot in the map on the left. Right. It shows you exactly where you were at when you did that. And you can see the highest minimum speed was right in the middle of the apex um and one of the ones that um tice pointed out and if you didn't catch it before it's a really neat thing is that when we hover over these values we can see the driven line for all of our sessions down here in the yeah. split map which is pretty neat because you can look and go, okay, well, this one's the fastest. If we go up, we can see the changes as we progress through the session and, and it changes. Um, so another pretty powerful way to get your data out of here. Emiliano just added into the chat box that he'll be adding that info into the split uh, uh, split map here uh, shortly. So he'll be putting the dot of exactly where, where we are uh, oh. in, a, in a future update. So look for that. That's a nice improvement, uh, Emiliano. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. Okay, we've got about 10 minutes left to uh, to study this a yeah. little bit more. I like the next yeah. couple columns to me, everybody that's watching, is yeah. be becomes uh, super powerful in this exact way of looking at channel reports with splits. So let's talk yeah. about the next few and uh, and get those, get those shown. I think we should skip to uh, corner radius first, the, the last two. Corner radius bugged me always. I found it really, really difficult to read the time distance plot for a, for a corner radius because they're strange U-shaped uh, graph. I really can't get my head around them. But with this way, it's I can understand it. Um, and I hope everybody else as well. Uh, you like to see what your minimum corner radius is for each corner, the wider the corner, most of the times it's the fastest way to do it. So we uh, created a special uh, math channel that makes an absolute value of corner radius because uh, otherwise you get issues when you have a left or a right turn, you get a positive and a negative value. So we've made an, ab an uh, absolute value of it. So it's always a positive uh, number. 
and we selected uh, the minimum corner radius. So now you can see that we have corner radius uh, shifting between 190 meters and you know, two, 205, 203. So you can see uh, sometimes we take the turn a little bit wider. Uh, that helps, but also more or less the point of turning in uh, is necessary to know. So we so we've added another column with the uh, minimum distance of if the with the distance in the split of your minimum corner radius. That's the next column. So you can see uh, on which point of the track you got your shortest uh, corner uh, radius. So effectively the this, apex, uh, the driven apex. Yeah, effectively. Yeah, the driven apex. So you get an idea if you was early or late apexing. And and what's pretty those, neat with this is. What, what I love about it is we talk about early apexes and late apexes and, and the different line, the different ways you can drive a corner. Well, this puts that a great number to it. And when we put that number to it, it then we can really chart it out and we can see these differences show up in this segment map because we have the highlighted line and we can see how it changes through there. And as we zoom in, we can see all those differences. Yeah. And especially when you click on the location of, or in the latest uh, column mat, you can see it on video as well, which your, uh, which point on track in the corner, your, uh, your smallest radius was, and you can, and you can see the heading of the car. So where you had, do you have a massive understeer? Uh, you can see that uh, on your hands and the pointing of the car uh, into the turn. Right. And Chase's comment about the understeer is great because you can see how here my hands are pretty consistent. And then we have this outlier. Look at there's an extra little bit of wheel in the car to make it turn. And then you can dig in even further and say, is the car pushing or is it, um, or how are things going there? Yeah. Got a couple of questions. Let's throw out there really quickly. One of them, the last one, I thought was kind of interesting. Right where you were at was, can you change the thickness of the line in the track map segment? And the and don't need to do it right now, Matt. But uh, both of those, the answer is yes. You always have the same controls that you have in all of our maps, where you can change the dots or to the the line thicknesses right there. With the multiples, whenever you're on the the lap that is active when you're hovering over it it does go wider automatically so that that is not to, that is not changeable but the rest of them underneath uh, you can change the the widths yeah. okay and also Kel's uh, question about the corner radius we're looking at the minimum value so we're looking at the shortest point of the of the corner Kel is uh, correct the radius is changing all the time mm -hmm. but all you really like to know is the smallest point of the corner because that's the point where the car is, is uh, rotating most. So that's the tightest point of the corner. And that is, uh, that is what you really uh, like to know. There's, there's, there's lots of things you may want to know that is a, to me, that is a fantastic one. And if you had more channels, maybe it's steering, maybe it's uh, throttle, maybe you would want to, to start to look at your throttle position at that point as you, and, or steering as you get to that point and, and what you're doing beyond there. So you would add to, uh, uh, if you had those kind of sensors, you may add to the table with, with some other data to understand fully what's going on. And um, Ty, so we really kind of dug into turn one here. And, and for people that want to go more advanced, you could use, if you have a throttle position sensor, you can add all those values. Um, but what do we do if we want to check out another corner? Well, we can uh, shift to, uh, for example, turn seven, I guess. So to do that, this is one of the parts that I think was pretty neat is Tice had worked through this profile and built all the way to do these things and built a great track map. And in response, Emiliano and the software team gave us a great way through the track button here that we can now pick our splits. 
and jump to a whole new corner. So, Tyus, which one were you thinking? Uh, I guess we said turn seven was also a good uh, corner to look at. So through this map icon, when we go to turn seven, it updates all the values. We get our video there, and we can make the same analysis here and take a look. There's uh, also a downside on this profile. I have to be honest. Uh, this won't work for example, uh, a chicane or uh, a sweeping corner uh, combination with uh, lots of lefts and rights because you get messed up with your acceleration and breaking points. So that really works for uh, break, turn, acceleration corners. But that's also the most of the time you like to analyze that uh, hairpins, for example, for this kind of uh, deep dives because that, that's the point where you can uh, gain the most time. Right, and, oh, and we'll... for some folks, um, one of the other kind of powerful things we can do here is we have the ability to color the values here and also put um, a histogram in the back to kind of see how consistent or not consistent the driving is. Um, for me, I kind of waffle back and forth, and a lot of times I keep it the straight numbers, um, especially here, because I'll say I really like how um, consistent my maximum speed coming in here was, and through my better laps, the minimum speed was pretty consistent too. Yeah. Let's see if I see something. Well, you, you, you can see in lap three that your uh, braking distance was quite long. And it's only a tenth of the, of the quickest uh, split. So I would say the most uh, gain isn't in late braking for this corner. But when and you that, look at the corner radius, saying, for example, that's a great point is that you look and it's really a tenth of a second and the braking difference is over what 70 almost 73 meters different right 210 feet different but the time is only a tenth yeah and analysis always drives more analysis is something that I always like to say. You just seen something there that you would, uh, what's your next question? Your, your next question always is why? And you would then dig into that one where you had the, the, the shorter the shorter breaking area and you'd go, okay, well, what did I do ahead of that? What did I do behind that? And why was that better? And you would just continue to dig in. That's just the, you know, what happened? Where did it happen? Why did it happen? Something we talk a lot about here. And uh, that just drive, you know, things like this, opens your eyes up even more and you, and you take the next level of data analysis, correct? Yeah. And you can make this as complex as you like. I played uh, around with pitch of my car, with the maximum uh, pitch angle of my car, just to check on trail braking and shock settings and stuff, just to see what, what's happening with uh, pitch angles. And yeah, you can really use anything you like, uh, understeer angles, minimum steer of a maximum steering input, uh, just anything you like, you can make it as complex as you like. And you may even save multiple profiles. You may have one that is for standard corner radiuses with, with using that radius, that driven radius and the calculated radius. And you may have a whole nother one for S's or acceleration zones where you look at the segments in different ways. So uh, the, the power is there for you to build them and save them as different profiles. A, a very, very, very powerful tool. Yeah. Okay. Can you kind of close up the uh, the actual analysis? Anything else you want to show real quickly, Matt, uh, since you're in control of the mouse before we start um, to wind this one up? Yeah. One of the ones in case people missed it, because Jeff asked a good question, was he asked if the video location is tied to a certain column. And the answer to that is it's tied to the data point that we double click. So I can click any of the values in here and it's going to bring the video to that exact point. Um, and we can see that, and, and a good illustration how linked everything is, 
is if we take the point of the minimum speed and we say maybe it's the highest one, right? And we double click this 112. It shows us the video clip here. And if we hop over to the data movies tab, we can see that this is at the minimum speed point in the graph and it's the same video position. So that's where the power in here really comes from is that we can double click any of these points, see the video, get all the chart out and go from there. So you can really get in here as deep as you want um, and see all those points in multiple ways and analyze the corner. And um, it was interesting because Tice in a second, this is a corner I always tried to drive deeper and deeper. Um, and in the video, you can see there's this uh, storm drain right here. And that was always kind of my brake marker. That's the thing. It's really hard to see when you're in the car. And I always aim to get that deep. But we can see it was it's probably not a good plan because my deepest braking markers don't turn out to be the fastest laps. So whether it's I'm so focused on getting that deep that it impacts the rest of the corner or just doesn't matter, the end result is it's not that critical. Um, so this is pretty neat because I didn't expect to kind of pull it out because that was, if you asked me before, I, that was pretty hard grained in me that I always try to hit that point in um, Tice's profile and looking at this for two seconds kind of proved what I tried to do in the car isn't really the key to going fast there. And again, like, like Emiliano has already mentioned, he's going to add that dot. If you double click on that point and then look at the map on the left side, you'll see the dot of where you actually applied the break, right? And then and then right. zoom in there and you'll see where that uh, where that catch basin was. Uh, you, right. you're, it's, it's falling below your hood probably right at that level, right? So that's where you were, yeah. that's where you were hitting it. So uh, that that's the positional thing. So there's columns and rows. The only thing I would add to this uh, before you jump in there and start making some of your own and start double clicking, just keep in mind the it, it's natural, but we tend to forget. You can only click on things that are points. So if you were had, if you were to put in what was my average brake pressure in this segment, and you double click on that, it's an average. So that double clicking doesn't take you into the data because it's an average of a bunch of points, right? So always keep in mind if it's a min or a max or a location, uh, double clicking on it will take you into the data in that way. So keep that in mind as you play with it. Okay. Perfect. Anything else you guys would like to add before we uh, before we start to close this one up? No, I think we're uh, I think we're quite complete. I uh, you can uh, stop your share there, Matt, if you would like. And uh, a couple things I would like to add as we uh, as we kind of start to close this down. There's a couple questions here. A coasting channel would be very informative. Absolutely, Scott. The uh, if you were to build that coasting channel and then say when did it start and when did it end, but then all of a sudden you've got these data points where you can just double click on them and, and see them visually and get your math on how long that was. Uh, we've always been able to do that, but only in the graph form. So this new channel report with splits with some of the power of being able to uh, just bring up each split and see all this information based on just the splits is very, very powerful. And I'm, uh, I'm very, very happy with it. Um, I'm, and I'm glad that uh, Tice found it and then and uh, started to work on it uh, as he did. And, uh, and then Emiliano on the software team able to adjust it even more to make it uh, to make it work, uh, really, really happy with that. So let me share my screen one more time here. And um, let me take a look and just make sure we're kind of up against it. Uh, John Barnum says, wow, I love this webinar. You create, guys created a foundation that is exactly what I wanted. I thought that's what you would say, John. Uh, John kind of planted the seed in me and, that, and Tice uh, independent figured this out. And when I heard the two ideas come together, uh, it was it was a couple, couple of months ago, we started talking about this has been one that I've been very much looking forward to doing. So, uh, so anyway, keep in mind that all of those, these columns and and all of this, it's, it's anything you want to build. We gave you just some ideas of what how this works and how you change the segments, how you make them into histograms, how you add different things down here along the bottom in the video. One thing we just ran out of a little bit of time to do, but if you're 
if you're a driver coach or you are being coached by somebody and you want the video, uh, another thing that has been fixed recently in the new Smart Ecamm 3 files is you can come up here and you can do the snip of the, the new style videos now. And uh, if you have that segment highlighted, you can't do it right here yet, but if you were to jump over to the Data Movies tab, zoom in on just that segment and hit that little clip video, it will clip a short video of however long that segment is and 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 uh and and save it onto your computer and you can hand it to your 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 coach and say hey i'm here's this corner that i'm uh, that i'm fighting and it will break down just that piece of just that one segment that you that you did and be able to uh, either hand it to your coach or the coach if he sees something he can send that back to the to the student so that clipping of uh, video now is uh it is very, very powerful. And Matt demonstrated the clipping of a, of just a quick shot, a still shot. So that's, that's very, very cool. So keep that in mind. Okay. So the, um, let's kind of wind this one down. The, within an hour or so, all of those links that we've talked about, the data that we just showed, uh, the user profile that you can load yourself, all the math channels that, uh, the, the, I think it's three different math channels outside of the AIM ones. Uh, that uh, Tice had built. I think we only looked at one of them here today, but there's some other really cool ones in there. That can be downloaded and, and imported. Somebody asked how to do those imports. There is a, so will be some links in the, uh, the YouTube description on how to import profiles. And, uh, and just do a quick search on the, on the Im importing and moving of the, of the files around uh, on previous webinars as well. So, uh, but the profiles, importing profiles is a link that will be down in the YouTube video uh, when we get done here today. They'll all be up there. It, this will be up there in about an hour or two. Uh, 221 videos this will make that we have up there. So that'll be, uh, that'll be pretty good. Um, the uh, uh, busy time of year, I don't know why it's been my busiest February that I think I've ever had since working here at AIM on support calls, emails, um, and things like that. Um, a lot of folks are uh, getting up to speed. Um, some of you may not think so, uh, those of us in the northern climes, but uh, but we're, a lot of folks are getting back to racing and uh, it's been a good time. So if you see the folks uh, out at the track, say hi, ask them any questions, give us a call at the 800 number if you have anything that, uh, that you have any questions. Our next webinar, Emiliano has gotten a number of, uh, of contacts and some ideas. He's made some improvements in the math channels. Um, uh, I certainly am getting a lot of questions as well. The, uh, our next webinar, uh, March 28th, is going to be um, the next step of math channels. And we're adding a couple of things. The lookup tables have been adjusted, um, uh, built up a little bit, improved. We're going to look at lookup tables, uh, math channels, and then specifically at uh, lookup tables as well. And we're going to introduce a new thing, a new topic. It's not in Race Studio 3 right now, but by the time we do this webinar, we'll make them active. There, where We have them out in beta and we're, and we're working on them. Emiliano's working on them. Uh, log sheets. Log sheets are, are going to be an important part of what uh, uh, you're going to end up using in the future if you have multiple cars, teammates, people that share data with you. Log sheets are just a way of being able to individualize certain cars and uh, uh, channel naming and, and, and all these different things where it comes into analysis and uh, you can tweak a, I changed my ride height on this one or I changed my, my track widths or my sway bar. What is, how does that affect everything else that's in my analysis? Log sheets are where you're gonna be able to do specific things to specific vehicles and tie it all together. So Emiliano is gonna introduce those next uh, next month as well. So everybody put that on your calendar. That'll be very, very cool. Looking forward to that one. And then I think the one after that, we'll go back to uh, another uh, deep analysis with some other some of the new updated tools that are uh, inside of Race Studio 3. So thank you guys. I, uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, Tice, a lot of hard work, a lot of uh, thinking up and, and working through some of the, the ideas practicing, playing with them, building, uh, and helping AIM um, and, and our software team adjust the software to make it work with the, the vision that you had. I, I really do appreciate that. Matt came in along with him and, uh, and, and kept, kept uh, throwing out other ideas, and they, and they ended up building uh, you know, that profile that you've seen and, and some pretty cool stuff that is working. So I appreciate both of you guys a, a ton. Uh, you've You've done some good work here with us and, and, and created something that's pretty cool. Uh, uh, Tice, anything you'd like to kind of close with as, we, uh, as we're closing this one down? 
Now, uh, really thank you for uh, for uh, having me again uh, on the webinars. Uh, a success story, if I've ever, uh, ever ever heard it around our webinars, came in here as a uh, as an as, as an attendee, signed up for them, and has become good friends and uh, and, uh, and and contributing. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, Matt. Uh, anything you'd like to add as we're uh, kind of on our way out? No, I, I hope people use what Tice put together here because it's so powerful. It gives you a way that we never really looked at um, to dig into the data and between a neat story collaboration between what Tice did, what Emiliano and the software team did um, with me really just cheering them on. They built a piece of software that gives us so much capability to dig in is um, I'm excited to get back to the track and really be able to dig into this when I'm there. So I hope everyone else uses it. Absolutely. And uh, as we uh, th thank you again, Matt, for uh, for everything you've done here today and worked with us. The um, uh, one other thing that you may have noticed, I, I did see comments as we were going as I close this down. Uh, everything was in metric units. It was in kilometers. It was uh, it was as much a uh, tip of the hat to all of our international viewers uh, that we didn't want to go ahead and just force the the issue in defeat. But it, it, of course, it was for for Tice. Those are his natural uh, his natural units. But some people may say, and I saw it in the chat, that it really was to make Matt's speed uh, Matt's speeds look better for his car. But uh, so we'll we'll kind of leave it at that. Uh, I appreciate everybody being here. Thank you again, and we look forward to seeing you uh, in, in the next month. Talk to you guys soon. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Enjoy your day. Thank you.